anticipated that it would have been welcomed and supported by the Green Party. And I am saddened that the Green Party have missed the chance to wholeheartedly and unreservedly endorse this report. To explain why I'm so puzzled by the motion, let's look at item three of the motion. Making cycling safer by implementing a 20 mile an hour limit on sections of main roads, particularly in the city centre and in district centres. Okay, in the actual re recommendation in the sustainability report, that's section 3.3, it states the following, that the mayor must take action to ensure Liverpool's <coughs> roads are safe for cyclists with protected cycle lanes and other solutions to increase the safety of cycling. So aside from the fact that everything in the green motion is already in the sustainability report anyway, in fact, what the sustainability report proposes goes much further. The commission's recommendation is a huge challenge for the city given our financial constraints and the state of the roads we inherited. But those of us who were at last week's Regeneration Select Committee, like the leader of the Green Group, could not have failed to have been pressed, impressed by the ambition of this administration to meet that challenge. And at that committee, our officers presented ideas to tackle the long-standing issues relating to the Strand. Ideas to give cyclists safe passage across the city centre, using segregated cycle lanes. Ideas to improve road safety without compromising traffic movement. If delivered, our response to the Commission report will go much further than just making Dale Street 20 miles an hour. So when there's positivity worded, when we have such a positively worded sustainability report, why should the Green Party put forward such a strange motion? Could it be there is an election afoot? Could it be that something's needed for the campaign to undermine the good environmental work this administration is doing? Surely not. I thought that the Busser Wouldn't Melt Holier Than Thou Green Party were a different kind of political party. I thought they wouldn't stoop to such political game plan. But that can be the only point for putting forward such a pointless motion. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Lord Mayor, it's an easy job to do the opposition to the party. Any policy, any policy, say do less of it, do more of it, do it somewhere else, spend more on it, spend less on it. Throw in, throw in, I should have done it earlier, if you have time, you can add me. Even throw in, I should have done it earlier, when even they have to finally admit it's absolutely the right thing to do. Whatever you do, never, never actually say what your own policy is. Just follow the advice of your leader. Up your game on presentation. I don't know if uh, my colleagues here are aware of the new advice presented to Green Party candidates. They're asked to be open, friendly, confident, have a mainstream appearance, ditch the sandals, level headed, and above all, be agreeable. Well, <coughs> you know, mainstream appearance. Tom has been a bit radical there without a tie, um, but that's about as far as it goes. And just tell people this is what they have to say. They're on the door faced with awkward questions. We want a healthy world where people can live meaningful lives. We all need clean air, healthy food, a healthy local economy, education that brings out the best in everybody. We don't want to waste our lives sitting in traffic jams, destroying the planet and hating each other. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> to face what is a brave what was a brave move by the mayor to bring somebody in from outside the council to advise on the steps we need to take to bring about a Liverpool where people can live meaningful lives, have clean air and avoid destroying the planet. The Green Party desperately seeks relevance. So it falls back on its first line of attack. Do more. The fact that much of the do more, as Councillor Bournemouth has already pointed out, is already being done, seems to escape us. Just a few weeks ago, we were meeting with Schneider Electric, the beautiful energy company, and BMW, to look at how we can introduce and expand the number of electronic charging points to service electric powered vehicles. 
Only last week, as has already been mentioned, our head of highways has unveiled the plan for our city's roads, and in particular the strand, which will make our roads safer for cyclists. When we saw these plans, Tom Crow, even as he raised to say, I am impressed. I did invite you to join the Labour Party, Tom, but you turned me down. <laughs> Despite what Green Party activists claim, our green space review and the development of the local plan will help protect green spaces from housing development despite the ongoing pressures from population growth and the housing needs of our citizens. And we continue to look at every proposal for renewable energy project and understand the need to grow that sector, not only because of the environmental necessity, but also the jobs that will come about as a result of that growth. Meanwhile, the Green Party will grudgingly allow Liverpool some limited growth to quote Councillor Brown and will put Liverpool's economic future at risk. Their dream seems to be of a future where mass unemployment will be sustained by putting everybody on a flat rate benefit and where Liverpool could be turned to some cast vent of Arcadian heaven. They seem to have no awareness of all of how the new roads are paid for and how services might be maintained for the, cities of, for the citizens of Liverpool. Noting this report is simply not sufficient. I welcome the report. It provides the basis for what the chairman of the commission says will help make Liverpool a sustainable and economically vibrant city in the future, building on the initiatives and passion that already exists. People told the commission that they want a safe, clean city with good job prospects, good integrated transport and sustainable, secure energy source. Underlying all the recommendations, Mr Weatherall says, is the need to provide a happy, healthy, clean city for current citizens and future generations, as well as an attractive place for business. That is precisely what the Mayor and this administration are seeking to achieve. And to use a quote from Jim Murphy speaking uh, to Nicola Sturge recently, we don't need your help. Says to hold our feet to the flames. 
And whilst I welcome you as the new leader, uh, Councillor Crown, um, it is something that you need to take on board. Far be it from me to say that you need to learn from Councillor Mumby. However, that is something that you really should take forward in, uh, in the next council. Smell the coffee. 
We've got to create a sustainable city, enabling it to be able to look after itself in the future. That will allow us to do those things. That's why Sefton Park Meadows, you're talking about Fuller Road, other, other roads, Smith Down Road, 5.7 million pounds it's going to cost to, to refurbish those roads. The city in the roads in the city are an absolute disgrace. <coughs> We're going to have to borrow £80 million pounds to do it. It's got to be paid back. And you talk about, well, oh, forget about that, or don't people, let's not worry about what the mayor's got to deal with in his real world. Let's live in our way. That's why people are waking up for it, because at the end of the day, people understand the pragmatic decisions that we're making on their behalf, and that includes sustainability.